My mother one time was walking through a parking lot late at night, and the man came up to her with an overcoat and nothing on his feet and walked up to him and opened up his coat and turns out the only thing he was wearing was the coat and he decided to manifest himself to my mother and my mother being the woman that she is simply looked at him and said really is that all you've got all right but in this video i want to talk about manifests and assembly manifests and you may think jamie that was a dumb or silly story but it's actually dead on to what an assembly manifest is notice let me list the contents of the directory here all we have is main class dot cs and we have three little bytes for some white space notice i've cleared out this file i want to say c sharp compiler please give me a library a dll file and i want to call that file me dll dot dll hit enter and the compiler will complain saying i don't have any input files so then i have to turn around and say all right all right all right, all right. main class dot cs so all i'm trying to do is create an empty dll no code inside of the dll and just to trick the compiler to do this for me i have to give it an empty code file so this is definitely an empty code file. Let me hit enter here. Then the compiler is like, oh, okay, good. Oh, whatever. Here we go. Let me list the contents of the directory. We have me dll dot dll made from zero code. And right, how often do you do that? Let me ildasm slash out mu dot text and the input file is me dll dot dll. Hit enter. And now we can look at mu dot text and you see it's it's pretty empty. There's not even a vertical scroll bar, but we do have an assembly. Definitely have an assembly here. A bunch of dot dot stuff, and again, that's the the metadata. Go look at the reflection assem attributes and reflection video playlist if you want to learn about these dots. But basically, there's data here. We can't execute any of it. We have a reference to MS Core Lib, which we don't even need because I didn't even call console right line or use anything inside of this blank file. But whatever, it adds this this extern here and then oh look here's the manifest right how do I tell it's a manifest because there's not an extern in here whereas there isn't an extern in here extern meaning we are referencing an external assembly MS core library in this case however this dot assembly directive means this is the manifest and we can learn stuff about this assembly it looks like there's some custom attributes in here that the compiler adds compiler services uh, let's see what's over here. A character string, we saw that in the assembly and reflection or attributes. The attributes video, C sharp attributes and, and that sort of thing. So this is these are custom. I don't even need these in here. The compiler just threw them in there for its own sanity uh, uh, with compilation. And then we have ooh, this looks important. Dot hash algorithm. Later I'm gonna show you how to sign an assembly and do some make a strong named assembly that kind of thing and we do hashing with it and this is the hash algorithm it uses or it used to create this assembly this number here just as a enumeration we'll examine later and then the version assemblies are versioned you know hopefully you're familiar with versioning as you write more and more code and you release we up version we increase the version the versions get better and you always hear from your friends have you updated to the latest and greatest microsoft.net have you got framework 3.0 have you got framework 4.5 oh it's so awesome jamie what are you going to do without it and uh, i'll probably do exactly what i've done without it before anyway that's versioning and and ideally these numbers go on and on up and up we'll talk about versioning later and why there's four numbers and that sort of thing but this is the manifest and something very important about the manifest is it gives us the assembly name and it tells us this information about the assembly but that's literally all a manifest is it's it's just data we're going to examine this in future videos as we examine assemblies in more depth but that's all it is it's just saying hey I'm an assembly this is my name this is the information about me let me close my overcoat so we don't have any more of an awkward moment together I'm going to close that don't save our changes come back up here let's run the C sharp compiler again slash actually let's uh there we go there we go I was using the up and down arrow keys to get through that. C sharp compiler library me DLL. Oh well, this time this time let's do module like we've done in previous videos. I'm gonna say module and we'll call it me module and we'll say dot net module and again dot net modules simply convention. Hit enter and then list the contents of the directory 
and we have me module dot net module. Let's let's ildasm again slash out moo dot txt me module dot net module. Now let's look at moo dot text and you notice here here's our this this is getting even more empty. We still have a lot of the metadata we've seen before. However, there's no manifest. Okay, this is external. There's no dot assembly manifest. So there's one of the major differences between a .NET module and an actual assembly is an assembly will have a manifest. If you go back through the videos where we created those multi-file assemblies, the DLL files that we created, they actually had manifests in them, whereas the .NET module files, they did not. All right, manifests are very important when you compile against and or run against, if you're running some code that relies on an assembly, then to identify that assembly, the framework will look at the manifest and ensure that the proper assembly is located. And this, this is one of the reasons why the file extensions .dll and .exe are not important to .NET. .NET does not care about those. In fact, the only time .NET cares about those is when it is trying to load those assemblies or locate the files. But after that, the extension .dll, .exe, that's just an operating system formality. Once .NET has that assembly, it, it forgets about the extension and just looks at the assembly. Hey, you're an assembly and you're called Moo or you're called MyAssembly or you're called whatever. The file extension is completely irrelevant once .NET locates the assembly.